Hi, Casa Community. This is Chris C here. I was doing some work with my colleague Luke uh, on building the Voxel and demoing it within the team, and we just felt like, wow, this stuff is making come along really nicely, and it would be a shame not to share some of these with our community for actually going to make a card. So uh, we decided that we're going to record an episode uh, of bringing the real-time coding and deployment that we are experiencing as we're building up Voxel and showing to you how you can make an entire new app page card based application uh, directly from your browser. So uh, today I'm so glad to be joined by Luke, uh, who uh, helped runs our engineering team uh, to have him demonstrate to us uh, what we've been seeing, which is making cards and just deploying them within like seconds. Right Welcome, on. Luke. Hey, thanks, Chris. Yeah, this is fun. I'm excited to be um, on the first episode of what were you calling this? Uh, Luke uh, and Chris. Let's call it card maker. Card we're maker. All right. That's better than my idea. I was going to go with uh, Luke and Chris, Chris try to make a card with pre release software uh, on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is awesome. I, I'm so proud of the work that the Boxel team's been doing uh, recently. And um, we got to a point where we've we're feature complete on what we're calling code mode now, as you know, Chris, and it's unlocking a whole bunch of capabilities. And so uh, what we're going to do today is to try to use them on screen and get to share them with you. Sounds good. So I think we should start with Hello World, because isn't that how you start learning any kind of piece of software or any kind of soft programming language anyway? Seems good. Um, so the question is, what does Hello World mean to us in card land? Um, uh, I think it clearly makes, means making a first card. We'll have some simple information on it. Maybe it'll be a kind of about me kind of page on the internet, mm -hmm. something like this. Um, yeah. So what I probably the thing to do before we jump into creating the first card is to give you all a quick little tour of code mode to orient you. Um, so this is Boxel's code mode. Boxel is the name of the product um, made by Cardstack and um, code mode is one of the, uh, well, one of the modes of software. So if we take a look at my screen here, Chris, um, I've got a card definition up in front of me. We'll learn a little bit about what that is um, and even create our own in the not too distant future here. Um, on the left-hand side of my screen, I've got some information about this card definition. We call this the inspector. And what can we see here? Well, we can see that I've got a card definition called person and that it inherits from our base card here com from coming from our base workspace. Um, we've got a few options, creating an instance of the card, inheriting this card, deleting, um, and we also have an option to look at a file tree. And so this lets us look at all of the files in this workspace. Person happens to be just one of them, but we have lots of other card definitions. There's card instances here. Then moving down in the bottom left, we have a recent files, a way to quickly jump around to different uh, cards here, or to our different files that we've been looking at here in code mode. Then on the right-hand side is when you're looking at a card instance is a preview of that card. And when you're looking at a card definition is what we call our schema editor. Do you know what schema means, Chris? Uh, schemas remind me of database and is almost like the columns in the yeah. uh, a spreadsheet or column in the table. Very good. And that's exactly what we mean by schema here is it's what are the fields within a card. Right. Um, and so here, what, what as you can see, we get to see the type of the field and the name of the field. Um, and we've got some fun options to be able to do things with them. You could rename them, change their type, change whether they're singular or plural, et cetera, et cetera. The key thing um, that we're going to, where we're going to step off into our uh, adventure today is up here in the upper right hand corner, new file. Um, and when I click this, I get a little drop down menu. Um, I can either create a card instance, a card definition, or a field definition. You have a guess about which one we're going to want to do first? Let's make some cards. So let's do a card definition first. Exactly. All right. So, well, here goes nothing. Um, I want to remind everybody as I do this that this is. Um, not finished software. This is uh, not even released software yet. We're working off of our staging server and it's, um, I would say, pre-release. So things will go wrong, that's okay. Um, what's important is that uh, enough goes right that you get a sense of what, what's happening here. So the new card definition modal that appears here, this dialog, it has four things that we need to choose to move forward. The first is the realm that we're creating this new card definition in. 
Um, and these are all the realms that uh, you kind of are have access to or have, have a relationship with. Um, we see a published workspace, a base workspace, and a drafts workspace. In the future, um, each individual Boxel user is going to have a personal workspace. And that's where you would normally do a lot of this initial development, right? as creating a new card, for example. The next option is, what do we want to inherit from for this card? So one of the really powerful features that probably we should go into more depth in a future episode is mm -hmm. inheritance. Uh, for now, we're going to just inherit from general card because we're trying to keep it simple for this this first pass. For display name, let's call this hello world. And we have to choose a file name, so we'll just also go with uh, hello world. And we can see on the right, this is going to be a .gts extension. Um, and you probably have not heard of a GTS file before. Right. What this means is it's, it's, it stands for .glimmer and TypeScript. Um, Glimmer is a templating language. TypeScript you may have heard of. It's pretty popular. It's a variant of JavaScript that's strongly typed. Um, uh, and this, this means that in the one file, so our current definition, we're going to be able to have our template and our TypeScript together in one. Mm -hmm. um, makes things just a little, little easier to manage, I think, overall. So I hit create, and I've now in my file tree, I can see I've got a new file, hello world, GTS. Um, I've got a import statement. We're importing card def from this URL here. And then I have an export saying we're exporting the hello world class that extends from card def. So this is the basic inheritance. It says this is a card definition. Um, and it has a one static member called display name set to what we entered in that dialog, hello world. Um, so if we were to go um, and uh, try to do something with this card, it would be pretty boring because there are literally no fields in this card when we create a new one. Right. Um, so we need to create a couple of cards. So what do we think for about me? What do you think uh, some fields might be? Uh, maybe the name of the person. Yeah, that's uh. a good, let's, let's just start there before we go deeper. Mm -hmm. So. We're going to use uh, create our new field using the scheme editor on the right. Now you can also, if you're very comfortable with TypeScript, you can also code this directly in the center panel here. Mm -hmm. um, so I am comfortable in both ways, but I sure like pointing and clicking because it's pretty uh, easy. For sure. <laughs> so I'm going to click add a field and um, let's call this full name. So we'll just signify that we expect you to put in you know, the user to put in their first and last name here if they're creating an about me page. We have this option at the top. I glossed over this, but we have a field type. Now string is perfect for full name, so mm -hmm. we'll leave that alone. But we will in the future take a look at what's underneath this change button. Um, limit to one or allow multiple. And the, the use case for this is if I have a type of field where I might have more than one value, um, so uh, as an example, uh, maybe if we were doing a contact card and we had phone numbers, well, so yeah, somebody can have more than one number, one. right? Um, but full name, I think I only have one. Yeah, let's go with that. So limit to one and click add. Let's see what happens. So a couple of things happened first automatically. One thing was that we it automatically added an import for this, this string card or string field here. Um, it added imports for field and contains from our previous card API URL import there. And then it added this line right here. So let's dissect this. So we have at field, this is called a decorator um, in TypeScript or JavaScript because it starts with an at and it decorates the rest of the line. So the decorator says, what you're about to see is a field. The name of the field is full name. And then this is the type. It's a contains string card. And in Boxel, there's two types of fields. There's contains and there's link to. Do you want to explain to people why we created two types of fields, not just one? Yeah, of course. I think the the idea here is that sometimes you want to reference something that may be changing. Like if you're linking to a friend, uh, you know, you may want their contact information to change and have it reflect there. You're just linking to them. It's almost like linking to the homepage and getting their address and phone numbers from their webpage for business or something like that. But sometimes you want something contained within it. So when you save the file, the file or this particular record contains that information, even if it drifts behind. Like, for example, if you have some a record that you want to keep about like what was the price of something, you don't want that to be changing all the time. You want to embed uh, or contain that 
pricing information or uh, address information for this package, right? You might have moved in between. You still want that to be there. So it's a, it gives you an opportunity to control whether you want things to be independently changing in the world or you want to make a, essentially make a copy and make it as part of a, the real life cycle of this card you're making. Yeah, excellent. Cool. All right, so uh, let's add another field. In addition to your full name, I think we got to have a, a picture on here. So let's add a field where we can put a URL for like a, kind of a headshot. Right. Um, so let's do this again. We're old pros at this now. So I can say headshot URL, add, and boom, we've got another field here. Um, and let's also go ahead and add a field for bio. Now for bio, um, this is going to be, I'm, I'm visualizing kind of a few paragraphs of text. Yeah. Um, maybe there's a little bit of formatting in there. Some italics are bold or something like that. Um, so I think this is a really good use case for like something like Markdown. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want it to be plain text because then like, how do you even, how do we even like style that with paragraphs, tags and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. So um, let's see if in our card catalog, we got something we can use. So that's what is underneath this change button for field type. When I hit change, what I'm going to see here is um, being able to choose a card type. And uh, this is the beginnings of what we call our card catalog. And we can see that we've got, well, we've got an author card type, a blog post. Well, wow, there's a, a lot of stuff here. Uh, now in our base workspace, um, this is a workspace that um, Cardstack maintains for mm -hmm. the community. And it contains the, really the kind of core common fields that you're going to use over and over again. In fact, we can see, if I say show more cards, we can scroll down and we should be able to um, see our string field. Yep, there it is. Um, we can see the ba real basics number field. And look, what do we got here? Markdown field. Perfect. This is yep. exactly what we want. So I'm going to um, choose markdown field. And I'm going to say that our this is a bio mm -hmm. uh, for the name. I'm going to add this. We got an additional import for Markdown. We got a uh, bio field here. Um, and I think we've got, I mean, there's probably more stuff we can add. Maybe we'll add some more later. But mm -hmm. for now, I think that's those are the kind of the basics. Seems good. So in order to now see um, how this card is going to look, behave, mm -hmm. exist, um, we're going to create a card instance. Now, I just want to tease something that's coming in the future here. In the future, you're going to be able to experiment with this card without even creating an instance, right? And Chris, that's what we've been calling Playground. Yes. Um, and to talk about why 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 Playground? Why is that important? And why didn't why isn't it in this version? Why don't we have it yet? Well, because it's fake data, right? So when you're creating this definition, you want to say, "Hey, show me like." three about me page i want to see like some instead of lorem if some maybe we we'll use some ai to generate some like fake people with some fake bio and kind of get a feel of how this you know this form or this you know template if we customize it and make it kind of look cool uh will look like in different type of data uh so we want to be able to allow you to kind of preview not just what the form is or what the structure is but also put some real life into it put some either data you type you know like just kind of data entry, or you can AI generate it. I felt like that is a really important feature that's coming later on. But for now, you still have to kind of make the definition and then make the instance, which is kind of the step one. That's how it concretely works. But I think this idea of sample and fake data really help, helps people visualize what they're making in a definition while they're doing that in that mode. Yeah, to could not agree more. I'm excited about Playground. Um, and really the only reason we don't have it now is because we're like being vicious about prioritization <laughs> because there's so much to do yes. here and so exciting, but we have to make sure we're doing the most important things first. Um, so the most important thing for us to do next with this card is cre create a new instance. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do that um, via the inspector here. So um, in the inspector, we can see that we're looking at the Hello World GTS file and that it's got a card definition in it. Um, and we have this create instance button here. So I'm going to just go ahead and click this and we can see we're going to create a new card instance in the draft workspace and it's going to inherit from hello world. That's it. Nothing, no other options to choose, nothing to change. Um, in the future, if I did want to create a card in my personal realm, for example, I could choose this from the pull down. But for now, this is perfect. Exactly what we want. Let's hit create and see what happens. All right. We have a card instance and Let's see. Well, I see some JSON in the middle of the screen. And oh, look at these fields that are listed here. These are our fields. Mm -hmm. 
Now there's a three other fields that I don't remember creating, title, description, and thumbnail URL. These are fields that every card has. So they're part of the base card definition. Um, then I also have this meta element in my JSON, um, and it says, what is the card definition that this card instance adopts from? Um, and here we're specifying our hello world definition. Um, and then we have one more field that I mentioned up here, type card. So if anybody out there is familiar with JSON API, you might recognize this JSON format as JSON API. And this mm -hmm. is just a very standard format. We didn't invent it. Um, but, uh, really you know, common out there and um, something that we have adopted for Boxel. Um, so on the right hand side, I don't know why it's showing person. That's not correct. Um, so that's a, a little um, bug here. But let's go ahead uh, and give the browser a refresh and see if it figures it out correctly or not. Hey, there we go. So um, we'll get the uh, engineering team to take a look at that one. Um, so hello world here is our uh, card type listed at the top. We see some field labels here. Now, of course, we don't have any data in here. So I think that's kind of the next step would be. Yeah, I think so. Put some data, data in. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's go and click edit mode. Now, what is this over here? Edit embedded at atom isolated. These are the four formats that a card can be displayed in. Um, Chris, do you want to give a quick summary for kind of each of these? Like, what is its purpose? Why do we, why do we have four of them? Absolutely. I think isolated mode is when you're looking at this card, like on the web, like you're going to a tweet or going to a TikTok, you want to see kind of like a little card sitting on top of like a bunch of stuff, like in the, maybe a modal, and you want it to have a kind of isolated experience. Like this is the link I will share with my friends. Like this is the most canonical permanent URL. What would that look like? And sometimes it's very customized. Sometimes it's theme if it comes from a brand. Um, I think of it as like also it's I think important it's like kind of the full view right the full view. like all yeah. of your if all if you're gonna have ten fields you're gonna have ten fields showing in some fashion on that isolated view right exactly yeah. and 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 the the other formats are formats that are smaller so uh, the atom format is just if I were to like fill up a thing and tag a person or tag a company or tag a contact what would that pill look like what is a small format if it's in a spreadsheet and I want to show that oh I have three products and the product is a card what would those things are. it allows us to have this kind of like almost like atom uh, 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 kind of insertion of these pills and they, they're designed to like go in line it's into like text. super compact super compact yeah. and better is somewhere in between something mm -hmm. that when you are like you know, let's say writing a blog post and you want to attach something or you want to sh like do a narrative you embed a video embed a quote embed maybe even a product but you don't want that product to take up the whole page you want to have a thumbnail and there's a certain selectable few when you click and then you want to get the isolated so embedding is a really important part of composing these things for the end user uh, so that they get uh uh the the the, the the idea of how they're navigating the space without having to click on every link. That's like, what is this blind link? Reminds me of like um, on social sites when you if you when you share a link, sometimes it shows you like kind of little like thumbnail and title right. of the page. Yeah, this is what we think about. Kind yeah, of when you share a link in a in a in a Discord, it unfurls into yeah. a little unfurling. Thing. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Except this embedded view, because it's part of the definition of card, it will be you can design it and yeah. it will consistently. Wherever this is shared will show up the same way mm -hmm. in different platform, whether that's within a blog that is being embedded in, within a database that embeds within like a, a table, uh, a, a lot of flexibility about using this embedded uh, mode in various type of containers. Yeah. Uh, and then the final one is edit. Uh, the, the thing that people always want is like, can I get a free admin tool, right? Can you just give me a form that works because making forms is sometimes more work than making the beautiful stylized output. We give you a standard edit view uh, you don't have to do anything. Every form based on a schema would generate the edit view. So that's what we get. Hey, and there it is. So we can see the art, this edit view that Chris is talking about right here. We got a field for full name, got a field for headshot URL, for bio, and then we have our title, description, and thumbnail URL fields here as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just put my information in here. Um, I do have a image here. Let's see. So um, I'm a beach volleyball player, Chris. I don't know if you know that. Oh, I know I'm that. I'm pretty obsessed. <laughs> and, it's a, it's um, a good representation of who you are, so you just put it here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that's going to be the theme of my About Me page, I think, awesome. I'll make it about beach volleyball. Um, 
Cool. So uh, let's see for bio, I'm going to um, go ahead and get some stuff that I typed out uh, from the clipboard Four paragraph bio here. Talks a little bit about my beach volleyball playing life. <laughs> um, and so we'll put that in. And now I'm really curious now that I've put these fields in um, what I get to see now. So let's take a look. Uh, if I look at our isol isolated view. So now those labels that we saw before have my values in here. And this is pretty cool. I mean, I think the coolest thing, Chris, is that the only thing I did here was I said that I, mean, I want three fields and I want them to be of these types. Mm -hmm. And I now have an edit view. I've got an isolated view, which is essentially the full view of my information labeled. Um, now, I don't have an atom or embedded view yet. In fact, it says here missing embedded components. So I guess those are things that I'll have to define myself if mm -hmm. I want them. Um, but I also am feeling like this, uh, this isolated view, it's um, thorough, let me put it that mm -hmm. way, but it's lacking a little pizzazz. <laughs> yeah. Um, in fact- Very boring. Very boring. I mean, in, the, the first thing I think about is like that, that it's supposed to be a picture, my headshot, not a URL. Right. So, so I think that's probably the next step for us is let's, let's uh, go through how to enrich this and make this give it, get a little life. Sounds good. All right, so we're gonna go back to our card definition here. To do that, I can use the inspector because the inspector tells me I'm looking at this card instance, but it adopts from this hello world definition. And if I click this, I get this navigation capability. Um, this is true all over code mode. Anytime you see one of these kind of pills or modules, it's clickable to navigate through this world of code. It's really cool, it's really powerful. In fact, just as a quick diversion, if I go ahead and click Markdown here in the Schema Editor, mm -hmm. I can actually go and see how this Markdown field is implemented. Right. And um, you know, people talk about open source and how cool open source is, but this is even more than open source. You don't have to go dig through GitHub to figure out where the code is for something. You could just literally click and we have this universe right there at people's fingertips. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Like this is closer to view source, right? Yes. Like like in a browser, there's a view source that you can go to where, you know, apparently it, there was a time where everything was HTML and that's really the source code. There's not like some hidden source code in one script source tag that you have to go and look up where that came from and find the open source project on Google, right? Uh, but here we are trying to like reintroduce this idea. It's a web of software. Right, everything is linked together, and you can navigate through code mode uh, to software you just wrote, like the Hello World, to software that you didn't write. The community wrote a Markdown, maybe they, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe even a better version of it. And you can see, oh, what has changed there? You can even change the type to a more fancy version. Let's say you want a rich text editor with real time synchronization. You can switch that, and maybe it will be compatible with the format you had before. But it's a web of software connected. Code mode is one way to navigate it, and that navigation. No Git, no switching repository, no downloading, no clone, no npm install. It's just all there live for you to kind of kind of browse or surf. You're surfing the code, like the way you surf the web. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, no, you know, all the things that you don't have to dig through. Did you notice um, before when I set up the back end for this? No, I don't think you did that. You're right. I didn't do that because in Boxel, there's no need to do that. The Boxel ecosystem and hosting environment provides that for you automatically. So, you know, I'm pointing out as we walk through all of the things that I'm, the steps that I'm taking, the things that I'm doing, but I hope that the viewers at home are gonna also notice the things that we're not doing here, because that's really part of the beauty and power of this, this system. So let's go back to, um, let's see, our hello world uh, card definition here. And I'm going to define our own isolated template isolated format. Now, without defining it, what you get is the default one in card definition. And by default, as we saw before, it kind of shows each field. And so you can imagine the code for that's gonna loop through each field, print the label, show the label, show the value, and, and so forth. Um, but we're going to take matters into our own hands right. and see if we can make our own thing. So to do that, we're gonna add a, isol a static member named isolated. And this is going to be a class, we'll call it isolated, that extends from component, this is a, called a, a generic in TypeScript, this is where they have these angle brackets. It's saying a component for this, hello world, card definition. And 
inside of this definition, um, we're going to have a template. If you remember earlier in our discussion, Chris, I was telling you about .gts files, yep. how we can mix, temp mix templates and code. Well, we already saw how we could have code, right? We've added all our fields yeah, here. This is a regular TypeScript file, right? Yeah, regular TypeScript file so far ex until this moment, because now right here in template within these special tags, we're going to be able to use a templating language. Um, it's called handlebars. It's a pretty popular templating language. Uh, the, the, the basic gist of handlebars is that you use curly braces to um, put a field in. So, you know, some variable kind of gets um, converted here using mm -hmm. the template, you know, using templating to be replaced with its value. Um, so, but for now, before we get into any kind of interpolation of variables or um, using components in here or anything, I'm just going to see if we can get it to work using the classic hello world. And I'm going to um, add one more import uh, here since we, are, we use this component definition that we haven't imported yet. Um, and this also comes from our card API here. So we're just going to add it to this list of imports. Um, and now what I'll do is I'll flip back to our Hello World instance. And lo and behold, our isolated mode now no longer shows me all of our fields and their mm -hmm. values. It just says Hello World. Right. Um, so let's go back now to the definition and just just to like make sure that we weren't uh, <clears throat> pulling our legs, I'm going to change this to hello, Chris, and see if everything works. And boom, instantly updates. Right. So in the category of things we're not doing, did you see me hit compile? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Compiling just happened. Did you clear upload or deploy? Did not do that either. Didn't deploy anywhere. This is all in browser. Mm -hmm. um, indexing, compilation, um, all of that stuff happens automatically um, in the in the Boxel hosting environment, which, by the way, is also open source. Yes. None of the stuff that we're doing is proprietary, closed source stuff. Everything is on GitHub. Even now, if you wanted to go see what we're doing, what we're working on on a daily basis, you can go exactly. follow along with us. It's a true open source project, MIT license all the way around. Uh, you can run it yourself, but you know we will make a hosting service uh, that allows most users who don't really care about hosting their own product uh, to use it. But the idea here is that anybody extend, everybody can run their own computer, find some bugs, or add some features and contribute it the, the, in the most natural way possible. Absolutely. Um, all right. So the next thing is to actually display something. So let's see if instead of it saying "Hello, Chris," we can make it say "Hello, Luke Melia." Because mm -hmm. that's yeah. I know that that's a value in our card. Right? You already entered that data. You've exactly. you put so, it in at model full name. So if this is working properly, this should interpret to my name, Luke Millia, because that's what we put in the edit form before, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say that this is going to say um, about Luke Millia, and the other thing that's powerful about this is that this is HTML in here, so I can say. This is an H2 tag, and maybe we've got an H1 that's uh, about me. Now, if we go back and look at our instance, bam, I've got some dynamic, mm -hmm. right? Dynamic value here. HTML. Can we change it to something else? We can change it to whatever we like. What do, what do you have in mind? Uh, I don't know, about someone else? All right, yeah, let's try. So if we change Maybe this. Maybe add a Sir Luke. <laughs> oh, I like I like the way you think, Chris. Knighted, and there we go, about Sir Luke Melia. Very cool. Um, awesome. You got knighted for your amazing volleyball, beach volleyball skills. <laughs> if only. I don't know if that's happened. I, guess, I bet if somebody won a gold medal in the Olympics, right, that they would do that for them. Um, although the UK winning a gold medal in beach volleyball, yeah, yeah. that's probably not going to happen. Not the weather. Them. <laughs> um, so let's come back to our card definition and add some of our other values. So we know that, um, let's see, oh, our image, right? We definitely want the image in there. So let's put this, wrap this up in a div, and we can put uh, the headshot kind of next to this one. Um, so headshot, we want an image tag, we want a source. And, you know, we just showed interpolating values um, using curly braces when we want it to appear on the screen. But we, you can also do that for HTML attributes. So here we want to interpret interpolate this image source. And so what I'm going to say here is at model dot headshot URL. Um, and 
if we flip back now, if all goes well, I've now got a giant picture of myself from the sunglasses nice. um, between the H1 and the H2. Uh, now, we want this to uh, look a little bit different. We also want to get that bio field in there. So let's work on those items. Let's do the bio, the bio one first because, Chris, this is going to um, introduce a new element that's a, quite a powerful part of the box soul kind of card model. Mm -hmm. I mentioned before that at model is how we make the data from your card available to a template. But we have a concept as you know, of fields. Mm -hmm. And fields are not just data. Just like cards have data, display, um, and behavior, fields also have data, display, and behavior. And so what we want to do in this case is we want to use the um, display logic of our bio, of the bio field here. And the reason we want to do that is, well, it's markdown. Yeah, right? There's a lot of rendering. Yes. There's a lot of like bold and italics and all these rules already. So the way that we do Bullet that points. is we use angle bracket here, at fields, fields, I think it's plural, we'll find out in a minute, um, fields.bio. And if all goes well, it should use the template, the embedded template that the markdown field has defined in it. Which, which, by the way, you didn't write. Oh, I didn't write that. that that's in the yes. card stack base realm. Yes. Um, something that we provide for you. But this could also be a field that I was using that a community member provided, wrote, wrote for me, or that maybe there's a developer in my organization who um, you know, knows a little bit more than I do and right. wrote, wrote for me. So anyway, let's go see how this is doing. So we've got our about me static. We've got our dynamic image. We've got our dynamic name. And bingo, I've got paragraphs of text here. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I didn't have to write the P tags. Um, all I did is I just wrote some stuff in an edit field, which remember we can see over here. And now it's rendering as HTML over here. Very cool. So um, I would like to make this look a little bit better. And I'm kind of at the end of what I can do with um, plain old HTML. You know what we need, right? We need something, something called, called cascading, cascading style, style sheets. Exactly. We need CSS. CSS is the you know the blood brother of HTML. They go together, um, and so we thought that they go together so well that we um, made a system where you can embed style tags into your template, um, and it looks just like this. And you probably, if you know your HTML, you're probably saying, oh, "Luke, yeah, you can do that anywhere in HTML. There's nothing special here." But I want to describe, want to explain one thing that is quite special about this. Um, we have automatic style isolation for you here. And so what it means is that there's going to be no conflict between anything that you style just in this card and um, other cards that are on the screen at the same time, um, which is when you're talking about a real composable system like Boxel, it's pretty important. You don't, you don't want, want something that is inserting, inserting something for, to make a logo red. red. To make, to make the entire, entire page work. Exactly. Yeah, right. that would be a disaster. And especially, especially when you're styling uh, simple th things like maybe a, a class called Headshot. Well, we don't have a monopoly on the class name Headshot, right? right. So um, let's do a few things here. Um, we definitely want to style this um, Headshot class. So I'm going to drop in um, a style that I wrote earlier. Um, and I'm not even going to worry about formatting this too much for the moment. Um, maybe we'll do that. And um, I also want to style my um, paragraph tag just to make the text a little, little bit bigger. This one, I'll fix up that indentation. Um, what else do we got? We've got our H2, so let's style that one. Make it uh, uppercase, a little lighter text. Um, and then let's also style that about me at the top. You know what would look cool, Chris, on that one is like um, kind of a custom font or something? Yeah, something more like, you know, unique, unique not just uh, uh, Helvetica. Yeah. So as you may know, Google Fonts is a kind of uh, free to use open source collection of fonts. Um, that you can pretty easily import into most CSS environments, and it works great with Boxel as well. So we're going to import um, this font, what is it called, DM Serif, um, and we'll import it from here, and then we will um, 
tell it to tell it to, that our H1 should use that DM mm -hmm. display font. So, all right, all right so we got some styling for our, to my isolated view. Nice. Boom, I've got a gorgeous hero image at the top of the screen. Um, you should also probably add the font thing back in. I don't think the font oh, is what happened to my font. Yeah, it didn't work. Okay, let's try that. So pop back to our GTS file. So I have my import here. Oh yeah, I lost my H1 styling for somehow. It says that that's saved. Let me just see if I have, I've got my H2, my paragraph, my hero, my headshot. Yeah, okay, good. So if we come back here, yeah, there we go. Oh, nice. That's got some. Now it got some serif. Yeah, it brings a little, I don't know, yeah. um, style to it. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing that I think would be uh, fun is to have a sort of like a little quote treatment. Um, I feel like a lot of you about me pages, like there's the bio, but then there's like a quote from the person. Yeah. So let's, um, let's add a field for that. Uh, and I'll, I'll try doing it, this with the schema editor as we did before. So I'll add a field. I'll say this is a quote. It's singular. And then I'll go definition. And in our schema editor, we can see that we've got this quote field and it's a string. Yep. But I happen to know that there's a more appropriate field type that we could use for this. That what is it called? It's called text area. Anybody mm -hmm. who's done HTML is going to know what I'm talking about here. Um, I think I can search for it. So I type in text here. Yep, there's text area field. Mm -hmm. And if we read the fine print, which you might not be able to read, but it says a field that can capture string values in a multi-line input format. Useful for capturing a large body of text. Well, thanks. Mystery programmer, whoever wrote that for me. And I'll hit save. And if we go back now that I've added this field, um, an important thing is that the, the the way that the data is stored for this quote is the same between string and text area. Right. So that's one reason I was able to get away with changing the type of the field. As you can imagine, that might not always be possible. Yeah, you, you might be creating a field that needs more data to work. Sure, or needs less data and right. you know, or in a different format. Um, but if we flip back here, we can now see that our quote field in the editor, mm -hmm. now there's plenty of, I can actually read it. Yeah. Um, and if we go to uh, back to our definition, we're going to need to um, add the quote to our template. Um, so let's go ahead and put it maybe here. Block quote. And inside of the block quote, we'll put a double quote and then the quote contents. Um, and then down in our gear and style, mm -hmm. our new block quote element. Um, and then we'll go over to uh, instance, back to isolated view. And now we have this kind of fun quote right. that really sets uh, sets the tone um, for our beach volleyball thing. We lost this. We lost our hero image here for some reason. Put that back. Hero. So uh, this looks great. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, now, we've been looking at code mode this whole time, but now that I have something that's pretty useful, um, it, you don't have to know how to code to use this, right? right. So if a non-coder wanted to um, interact with this, what they would do is they would go to our interact mode um, and in interact mode, they would be able to access the same card we have up here. Um, now I happen to have it open, but if you didn't have it open, you could do something like search for it. So I'll just put in my name here and boop, there's oh, an author bio that comes up and now here's my hello world. And now I've got this hello world card up here. I don't know anything about the code, um, but from here I can um, copy this card URL potentially to share it with the mm -hmm. public. And this hints at an uh, upcoming feature that um, we have planned, which, which we call host mode. And Chris, do you want to tell folks a little bit about what host mode is? Yeah, host mode is allowing you to take these cards you have made, which could be content, or it could be database or apps or even forms, and put it on a navigation. So have a header, uh, you have little tabs, you can do it, or whatever your format would be. And you can essentially like send just a URL out there with your own domain name. We probably will support 
uh, like a, a, a special domain like Boxel.ai domain, but in the future you can even map it to your own you know, uh, purchase domain that you bought. And that allows you to make a site that's composed of many, many different cards you made. Some of them are content, some of them are like apps, and then they're completely uh, a one experience for your visitor. They can just go and then they don't know what that you uh, borrowed this from one uh, catalog and you made this on your own. Uh, and that the idea is that that becomes a replacement for like a WordPress or like a hosting site. And in case they will also actually replace so some social site, you can have uh, cards that rep represent something that's a social media profile type of thing. And that can also go on that some host mode. Uh, so these are the building blocks. Host mode would be like a pasteboard where you put this in the in a tree and that becomes a website uh, that that is indexed, search engine accessible, copy and pasteable, but it would be the same mockup here. Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, one of the things, Chris, that I hope people take away from um, this recording is that there are a lot of familiar ideas in Boxel, TypeScript, templating, the hosted stuff that you're talking, talking about, but when we put it all together, the way that cards work and the way that you, you know, define cards and interact with them, it really is a new way to build software. It's a new way to think about software. It's challenging the way that I think about how software fits together. Um, so anyway, that's what I would encourage folks to start to think about. If you made it this far in the video, um, thank you. And uh, yeah, get involved with Boxel. Keep, keep an eye on what we're up to and uh, we'll let you know when it's time for you to come in and start playing with it yourself. Yeah, and then as, uh, as part of this YouTube series, we'll do other, uh, you use the same code mode and interact mode and try to build other things. Yeah. Uh, uh, so then we might build a database, we might build some sort of like financial documents, things that are gonna leverage these high level structures, just not string card, but like building up from a person to a vendor, to an invoice, you know, different type of things that looks more and more like business applications. We'll do it and then kind of show the composability of the system along the way. Uh, but I think the, if you're interested in this uh, project, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then if you're a developer, uh, go to our uh, GitHub account, uh, github.com slash cost slash boxo. That's where all the development's happening. Everything you see here uh, is is in, in the public MIT license. So uh, as a, if you have contribution, you want to have ideas, uh, please communicate with us uh, on that on the, as well as on the Discord links below. Uh, so thank you, Luke, for walking us through the hello world. Uh, seems pretty involved, but mm -hmm. uh, not that many lines of code to do all these things and have it be a basically a hosted full stack application yeah. uh, that is a CMS of, of some sort, uh, but just step one. Excellent. Um, only thing I have to say, Chris, is goodbye, world. <laughs> goodbye, world. See you next time. Ciao.